We're learning a Maimer, a discourse by the previous Rebbe, 1930, the previous Rebbe. And the Rebbe basically, let's make a very, very short summary of what we learned. The Rebbe started in the first chapter. The chapters don't have numbers over here, so it's difficult to say first, second, whatever. The, the Rebbe started saying a classical verse. The verse says, Leman das aretz, so all the nations of the world should know that Hashem is God. He is the Lord. Anoi. There's nothing, nothing else. And the Rebbe changed, so to speak, explained a deeper meaning of Am Haaretz. Usually it's translated nations of the world. Then the Rebbe said, usually it's translated within the Jewish like knowledge or whatever, the ignor ign ignorant people. And then the Rebbe said, we're not talking about any ignorant people. We're talking about people that do business the whole day, busy people, busy people. They are busy with earthly matters. That's why they're called Ame Haaretz, the people of the land. So to speak. That's basically first chapter. Second chapter, the Rebbe said, okay, I don't understand. It's difficult to understand why would a person go astray from the path of Torah and Mitzvah? Why would a person be against God, so to speak? And the Rebbe basically answered, we have a Yetzirah, we have a bad inclination, and this bad inclination gives us all kinds of ideas, all kinds of seductions, etc., etc., basically connecting us to the pleasure that the world actually gives us, or can give us. Earthly pleasures and earthly matters, etc., etc. That's why a person actually goes astray from the Torah, even though I'm, I'm going, like, forward, but just to explain why why would the Rebbe go into this, because the, the world is too strong, and it's actually a pleasurable thing, and that's why people go astray, in order to get the pleasure of the world. And then the Rebbe asked, wait a second, or explained, basically, not asked, explained that actually there are different kinds of pleasures in the world. You have very, very low earthly pleasures, that they actually generate a lot of pleasure, but it's the same pleasure that an animal can have, out of eating something, drinking something, etc. And then the Rebbe said, look, for a higher level, you have also the voice. Voice is also something nice, you can hear a nice voice, and it generates pleasure, and it's a little bit higher than the earthly and material things, but it's still in, within the material world. Then you have pleasure on feelings. A feeling, an emotion. And he went into the distinction between Avram Avinu and the rest of the world, so to speak, in his times. Of course, he was against the rest of the world. He was alone, so to speak, in this uh, monotheistic, monotheistic thing. So what's the distinction? Because a person can have pleasure out of a quality, of a, an, an emotion. I like doing good, so I do good to somebody else, and I have pleasure out of that. But this pleasure is also kind of uh, not not good, so to speak, not good. Why? Because, again, if somebody is screaming in the 10th floor, push me, push me, and I, I'm a good guy, and I push you, no. And it generates so much pleasure. Look, the guy is dying. He wanted to die. What's a good, very nice. No, this is not sane, so speaking. <laughs> not a correct my, uh, frame of uh, thought. So that's basic pleasure in emotions. And then Avram Avinu on the other side, Avram, he had pleasure in emotions, but he was able to distinguish between his own nature, when it was correct to apply his own kind nature, or, or not. Go against his own nature, that's why he gave food to people, and if you didn't accept that you have to thank God, I'm, I'm going to be a, a tough guy. And it's going to be hard on you really hard. Either you pay me a lot, or I don't know, I'm going to have to find some kind of punishment. But Abraham was a good guy, yes. But the cycle, the intellect, guided, so to speak, his emotions, and he was able to go even against his own nature. But after all, all of that is the pleasure on emotions. And then the Rebbe said, there's another pleasure, another level of pleasure, which is cycle, intellect, chokhmah, wisdom. And this is basically the last thing we learned, that the human being can access, so to speak, this kind of pleasure, and the 
the reason why he can access these and the reason why it really generates the highest level of pleasure is because each creature craves, so to speak, to go beyond his own nature, beyond his own self. And then he went into the, the stones, so to speak, minerals go into the plant, the plant goes into the animal, the animal into the human being, and the human being, wisdom. Wisdom, you go beyond yourself by tying, so to speak, yourself, by connecting yourself to God, who is beyond everything. And how do you connect to God? Go learn his Torah. Go learn his teachings. Go do his commandments, whatever. And that's, that way you really get connected to God. This is a very, very short summary of what we learned. Let's move on. Behine. Now, al yedei iskashrut zu, shea adam iskasher batoira, through this uh, connection that a person connects to toira, arehum iskasher venichel bechokhmasa izbarach. The person gets connected and gets included into his wisdom, the wisdom of God. I know, that means, the hen beisek an nigle de toira, she most chokhmasa veretzun izbarach, this happens in two ways, so to speak. Both the learning of Nigle. Nigle means the revealed part of Torah. Talmud, Midrashim, Chumash, five books of Moses, whatever. In that part of the Torah, that's the essence of the wisdom and the will of God. This is what the, his wisdom decreed. This is appropriate to eat or to do, whatever. And this is invalid. You cannot do this, etc., etc. This is what God says. It doesn't really matter whether we understand it or not. This is what God says. Look, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that, etc. And this is a very, it's a Talmudic phrase, very deep and long, uh, long explanation phrase. I'm not going to go into the details. But basically what the phrase is, is anything that a good student will ever say in the future, what the phrase is, is anything that a good student will ever say in the future, Everything was said to Moshe at Mount Sinai. Everything. The point is, without going to the deepness of this particular phrase, but the point is, a, there, there are certain uh, learnings, certain things we can learn in Torah that are revealed, known. It's in the books. Go learn. And what does it mean, really? This is the will of God. Eat this, don't eat that. Okay. Behen, heima. And what am I talking about, like, in the practical sense? I'm talking about all the laws of the oral Torah, and the reasons and the logics behind them. Every single thing is, everything is the wisdom of God, liberally speaking. This is what he's thinking, so to speak. And when a person is actually working on them, there's a word over here that is a classical word, word, I'm sorry, in the books, oisek, oisek atoira. The truth is, it's a special word, so to speak, because if you're going to talk about learning toira, it's limud. Limud atoira. We learn toira. But he's talking about oisek. Oisek means like you really invest yourself into this and go to the deepest place you can actually reach in your mind, in your whatever. This means, this, this word oisek means. So, when a person is oisek by him, you really learn this and understand this and, and argue and discuss and where is it going, where is it coming from, etc., etc. You get united and included into this. Imagine, very simple example, very basic, but imagine when a person is actually really learning something, whatever subject it is, you're into the subject. And somebody else comes and asks you something about something else, a different subject. You say, wait a second, right now I'm into this. I can't answer you. I don't know. I'm into this. You have a question about this, I can answer you. We can argue. Otherwise, don't bother me. I'm into this right now. The truth is, you're sitting in your place and you have a book in front of you. You're not into the book. <laughs> no, clearly not. But spiritually speaking, so to speak, in, a, in an abstract way, you're actually into this subject. This is what he's talking about. You get one with the subject, and you go to sleep, and you're still thinking, but I didn't get this page. This I didn't understand. Why is he talking about? Why did he say this? Etc. Etc. They as therefore, in that case, this is what actually oisek, oisek means, like a real deep learning. You are unified 
with God's wisdom, literally. Okay, this is one part of learning, the revealed part. Then, basic Penimius Atoira, the same thing happens when you learn the deepest part of the Torah. Sheyedia Sasaga Selokus. Be the change of, of wording used. This means what's Penimius Atoira? What's Hasidus? What's the learning of this? This is knowledge and grasping godliness. It's different. I'm not, I'm not asking what God wants from me. Like, do this, do that. Eat this, don't eat that. No, no, no. I want to know God. I want to know Him. Not what He says or what He thinks, what is His wisdom. No, no, no. I want to know Him. The whole in Yon Torah, every single thing and every single law in the Torah, as they are in a material world. Again, do this, don't do that. Arehem. I'm sorry, they exist also as they really are. What's the truth of all these laws? The spirits is in the high worlds, whatever, spheres or emanations or attributes, whatever that means. And in the spiritual way. They exist in a spiritual way. I'm going to give you an example. Allah had the Shnai Moichs in Betalis. Betalis. The whole, there's, a, there's a law called, I'll explain in a second, called two are holding a cloth. What is this law talking about? This is the beginning of Baba Metziah, of the whole volume, volume of Talmud, huge one, important one, difficult one, etc., etc. Baba Metziah, that's what it's called, starts with this law. Shnai Moichs in Betalis, Zia okay, two people are holding a cloth. He says, this is mine. The other says, no, it's mine. And they argue, you know, they're pushing towards each one. And they go to the, de- to the base dean. They go to the rabbis. And then the rabbis have to decide who's the owner over here. So you have, on one hand, the concrete, so to speak, practic- practical law. The rabbis have to tell what to do with these two guys. They came to the base dean, to the, to the court of law. And we have to solve their problem, so to speak, help the people. So the rabbis give a, an answer, whatever. This is the practical law, so to speak. Lemata, down here in the, in the material world, world, Utalis Kashmi. We're talking about really a piece of cloth, a physical thing. Ushneyanavshim Kashmi. And we're talking about two people holding this cloth, saying, it's mine, it's mine, no, it's mine. The Allah However, this law, this same law, Nilmetes the Ganeidim, they learned this law in the Ganeidim, in the paradise. What is people doing in paradise so many years? We don't have 70 girls and etc. No, no, that's the Islam. No, we're learning Torah. That's what we, that's what we do in Ganeidim. And we, what do we learn? Exactly the same thing. The Shah, Meino Shayach, Inyan Gashmi's Klal, but in Ganeidim, in the paradise, where's the cloth? I don't understand. What does it mean to people? What's people? I don't understand what you're talking about. And the learning is the true level of this thing just as it really is. How is it? As our sages taught Torah, the Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, in the Zoya, the Arizal, in Kabbal, etc., as our rebeim, our teachers, taught us and told us, etc. In the most inner matter, so to speak, of this thing, in the soul. The zeu pnimius chokmasa is barach. This is the most inner part, so to speak, of the wisdom of God. So the Rebbe is not going to go into the details of this particular law. But clearly, you have a body, and you have two souls fighting for the body. It's for me. No, it's for me. The, the animal soul says, I want this guy to eat the whole day. And the godly soul says, no, I want this guy to learn the whole day. It's for me. No, it's for me. It's mine. It's so they argue the same thing. So it's just two people, so to speak, quote, unquote, holding a talis, a piece of cloth. What's the piece of cloth? The body, yourself. These two souls fighting, who's going to be the owner of this body? That's the way they learned the same thing in Ganeidim. Hine. Now, when you're actually learning this, 
And you miscash it with the Pneumius Chokmas with Barak. You get tied, so to speak, united with the most, the innermost part of the wisdom of God. Shelemaila Maila Migalia Shebetoira, which is way beyond higher than the revealed part of the Torah. So, just to give a very simple, try, I'm trying to find, but simple example of this, depending on what you're learning and what you're investigating, so to speak, you unify yourself with different parts of a person. Depending on the conversation, it can be a very, like, very simple conversation. How are you? I'm fine. You, yeah, I'm all set today. Yesterday I ate the ice cream and it was so good, you know. Yeah, let's go. With okay, so are you talking to this person? Yes. Is it a deep conversation, like really touching the person? No. It's very superficial things. And it's fine. It's okay. So you, you unite yourself with this person in a superficial level. But when you start talking with this person in a different level, like, how do you feel? You know, I'm sad today because my wife told me this and I don't know what to do with my children. And Oh, so you got to a different level. You start talking in a different, you, you tie, you connect to this person in a different level. Can you tell me something? Like, I don't know what to do with my son. My, my children are driving me crazy. I'm, okay, so let, it's a different type of conversation, of course, and it's a different type of link with the person. Because you don't say anything that happens to your life to anybody. No, you know, certain things you keep for yourself or for your very close friend. Why? Because you have a different connection with these people. And therefore you talk other things. I don't care about the ice cream. I don't care about the weather, the sun. The, I don't care about anything. Don't, don't bother me with that. I have a problem with my children. Oh, really? What happened? Okay. So that's what he's talking about. Depending on what the way this uh, the interesting part in the Torah is in the Torah is that what you're learning is actually the same words. Shnaim or Zimbetalis. There are two people holding a cloth. The words are the same. But if you learn it in a nigla, in a revealed way, so you're connecting to God in a revealed manner, to his revealed wisdom, to whatever he wants, that this part of the talent should be for this guy, this part of the cloth should be, should be for the other guy, that's fine. But if you learn the same words, just in a deeper level, so you're connecting yourself with the deepest level of God, to him, to him himself, so to speak. Not to whatever he wants from, no, 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 to him. The hine. Now, there's another there's another virtue, so to speak, of this knowledge of the, mo, the innermost part of the Torah and the effect it has in the soul. It's not just you're connecting to, so to speak, a different level of God in a deeper way, your deepest innermost part with the innermost part of God. There's something more. That even though you're just knowing the existence of these particular things, he's explaining, he's going to explain. What I mean is like this, the Begalia Shiba Torah, in the revealed part of the Torah, when you're learning a law, you understand the essence of the thing. Like learning about two people holding a cloth. You can picture this in your mind, and you can understand two guys fighting over an object, whatever the object is. The example given in the Mishnah is a cloth, with a piece of cloth, but it can be anything. Uh, so you understand what, the, what you're talking about. You know what a person is, you know what an object is, and etc., etc. You know mahus adav, the essence of the thing. But when you're learning the innermost part of the Torah, your knowledge on, on this subject, any, anybody's knowledge on this subject, is just metzius. The, the fact that this is like that. Do you get it? No. There's a soul. Oh, did you ever see the soul? No. There's an animal soul. Oh, really? Did you ever see it? No. Do you really know what you're talking about? No. I don't. I know that the texts talk about this. I know that the tzaddikim, the righteous, talk about this. There is such a thing. But do you really know it? No. There's a saying, Hasidic saying, it sounds weird, but it's simple. It's more simple than what it sounds. That 
for us, Oilam Haze, this world is bepshitus, it's an obvious thing. Like anybody asks you, does this world exist? What do you think? Are you fool? <laughs> the world is over here. I see it. It exists. And Atzilus or whatever, anything spiritual is, is Hachus. It's a new thing. Like you're really talking weird. I don't know what you're talking about. And for the angel, it's the other way around. Atzilus, like spirituality, is a Pshitus, obvious thing. Open your eyes and you will see God. But this world, physical world, is a new thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's people and there's cows and dogs and cats. What? I don't know what you're saying. Weird words. I don't know what you mean. They, they, we see things in, in opposite ways. So, again, Primus Atoira, the innermost part of the Toira, we just know Metsius, the reality that this exists, but we don't get it. The essence, we don't get it. Mikol Makim, however, this sounds like a big disadvantage because anybody can sit for hours and talk about things that they don't really know what you're talking about. Nobody knows what... The guy talking, he doesn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about either. He just says, okay, the book says this, I can explain to you, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Atzilus, yeah, chesed de Atzilus, yeah, kindness of God in the world of emanations. Very interesting. Do you really want, know what you're talking about? No. Mikol Makem, however, there's a very huge, big advantage in knowing this. You know and you grasp at least the existence of spirituality. You feel it in your soul. And then the Rebbe again goes in Yiddish to explain better. <laughs> it's very by him that hurt. You really feel it. And then you really connect and you really get tied to this, so to speak, to the spirituality of the thing. It's not anymore just a law. The law says that when a guy is holding a piece of cloth and the other guy is holding the same piece of cloth, you should do, the, you should do this. And where is God? I don't care. The law says this. No. God is creating a soul and he's sending the soul down here and with a mission. Oh, so now you're talking about something else. Even though we don't really understand what we're talking about, not what the soul is, not what the mission is, not what God is. Yeah, but suddenly you're talking about something higher and you get connected to this higher thing and you start feeling it. Like whenever you look around, you see your mission and you see you have a purpose. Why am I creating, etc. If you just know the laws, you can know the whole Talmud by heart. And you just know laws, lots of laws, and very nice. And, and when the problem comes in, so you know what, this, what the solution is. Yeah, if this problem comes up, the law is like this. That's it. That's all you know. But when you know Pnimi Zatayra, you get connected to God. It's a different level. It's a different thing. And through your, your, you getting connected to spirituality, you go beyond your own materiality, your own self, so to speak, in a, in a physical world. Ergeta roisun zaine grobkeit. He says it very nice. You go away out of your ordinarity. Like you're not anymore just a regular human being and just like a regular dog, just like a regular cat. I happen to be a regular human being. No. And you suddenly go up into the level of the most subtle spirituality and spirituality. Was the Edelkeit, the, I don't know how to translate this word. Edelkeit means like a refined person, the refinement. You, get, you, you feel the refinement, the sub, subtle, whatever in your own soul, and you feel this in every single thing that a person does, and in the details of every single part of your life. You start functioning in a different level. As Alcid Vedakus, everything suddenly is subtle, very, very refined, and suddenly becomes spiritual. Built in Nitzvah's vacation. You cannot grasp it in a material way. 
בעצם, essentially speaking, you can't get it. הוא בלי הרגש הזה עצמו, and you don't feel yourself. You start feeling this thing, not yourself. If you know laws, I know so many laws, and I can give you so many classes on so many laws, and yeah, it's all me. Me, me, me. I know, I know, and I know a lot. Yeah, you know what? It's, this is not about you. It's about God. I know. That means, as it le chazach was there too, every single thing that you do, hen be limud ha-toira, hen be yisak ha-mitzvahs, both in learning Torah, you see that it says over here, limud ha-toira, it doesn't say eisek, he says limud. Learning Torah, the eisek ha-mitzvahs, you actually working in every single commandment that God told you, the unpay and all the ramifications, etc., is dos edel. Suddenly becomes more refined. Nit grav be'etz, not very coarse, essentially speaking. <clears throat> so in this chapter that I've introduced, that what happens actually when a person starts getting connected to the wisdom of God? The first thing that happens is that you go beyond yourself. And then he started explaining what, the, what Hasidus does, so to speak, the most innermost part of the Torah. You go beyond yourself and you actually start feeling spirituality. And the idea is like this. Now, the most terrible low, lowliness, so to speak, the lowest level of a human being is when a person falls into feeling and really getting caught in materiality. When when the material world really starts being an issue in your life, not because you ate a chocolate, okay, very nice, you ate chocolate. No, 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 this is my life. And I have to travel to Switzerland, and I have to buy the best chocolate over there, and then I have to travel to I don't know where, and buy even a better one, and I'm going to save my whole life to buy a ticket to I don't know where, and buy the best. Mm, I think this is really an issue in your life. It's not just eating chocolate. It's like... My life is about this. Okay, so you got caught into this. Automatically, are you max? It's like people that and when a new iPhone comes up, they have to do the line for five days and they have to be the first ones and they're so happy about this and they bought it. And they, wait, you'd really destroyed your whole life for a number of days just to buy this physical thing? Really? Automatically, automatically, you really feel so good about yourself. Yeah, I got the iPhone. Wow, I'm, a, I'm great. I'm a genius. As you really see in a physical way. There are people that, naturally speaking, they are good people. In essence, they're good people. And they want to do good to other people also. And sometimes they even have pleasure by helping other people. They really, really feel it. It's good. But the main thing in their lives is feeling. Baal, the literal translation of Baal means like a owner. I'm the Baal of this and that. But the point over here is like you really, your life is about Feeling. He feels himself so much. He really pays so much attention. He feels so strong his own self. Me, Pirush. What do I mean? You see, he's talking in English and in Yiddish, and he still says, I'm going to explain this in a different way. <laughs> in Yiddish also. He is, by himself, a thing. Me. Really important thing, more than it's really necessary. We all understand, the Rebbe doesn't talk about it, but we all understand that you need some, uh, some self-esteem. That's okay, that's fine. Uh, but this is Yeser Alamida, much more than really what is necessary. The reason for this is because all his thoughts about him is, are about himself, just only about the virtues that he has. I'm such a smart guy, I'm such a good guy, etc., etc. He's all the day thinking about, about 
the virtues that he really has. Because it's true, he's a smart guy, he's a good guy, etc., etc. And Eilu She'enam Be'emes Etzlai. And also those who he doesn't really, which he doesn't really have. He only thinks he has also these virtues. The truth is, he doesn't really have them. But he thinks he has, and he's all the day thinking, my hair is so long and so nice and so... You don't have hair, do you know that? No, but it's very nice. And, mm. And he, in, on these, on these virtues that he has, and the, those that he doesn't have, he's really working the whole day and thinking the whole day. He's his own existence by him is so felt. He feels himself so much. It is filled as a filled zich there. And again, he feels himself so much. And when he does something, Okay, this word is difficult to, to translate. It really comes out. Boilet is something that comes out. You know, convex and... Okay, blita means something that comes out. So when he does something, he takes care of writing this in all the newspapers of the city. Everybody is going to know that he did this. Everybody's going to know. And he really thinks he deserves the most praises and the most thank yous of the whole city. Everybody has to thank me because I did this and that. When he does something good for somebody else, he really thinks I deserve a good thank you. Did you say thank you? And he says to the other one, that, you see, I just did a favor for you. Did you see? Or I'm, I'm doing something for you. To the point that sometimes he really makes the life of the other one bitter. And he, because he did, I did a favor for you, and every single day you see this guy, oh, you remember yesterday I, I did a favor for you. And two days after, you remember a few days ago, I did a favor for you. Did you enjoy the favor? Was it good for you? And you all the time ask him, yeah, I thank you, you know, it's, it's okay. It's, what else do you want from me? <laughs> Leave me alone. I got it. And with this favor that he did, er far bitter the end of them leben. He makes bitter the life of the other one. Mit seine toivis, with his favors. It's real, literally as killing the other person. You're really making the other, the other one's life impossible. This is not because he's a bad guy. No, no, no. Was it a schlecht? Is he a bad guy? No, no, we're not talking about a bad person. Adrava, on the contrary. He wants really the good for the other one. Ah, however, because he's so cut into materiality, and he's grober, he's a grober mensch, he's really a poor person, and he's so much into feeling himself. Yemold is bemeilo als for the tut is zayer grop automatically everything that he does is coarse mit a blita gdoilo really again publicizing everywhere that he did such a thing unachzaka stevale atzmoi and he is really like expecting everybody to say thank you and thank you and thank you. Aval kasher yotzim gashmi so he went but when this person goes out. Of his own physical things, is etlich zach was there too. This idol. Automatically, every single every single thing that he does is more refined, on a blita, without publicizing everywhere, etc., etc. On on a zakas toivel atzmo, and he is not expecting everybody to say thank you and really thinking that everybody should thank him. No, adreba. On the contrary. It's even better if nobody really knows that I just did this. Nobody should really recognize that I did this. 
Und das ist der Teuf, was kommt von dem Limud, was weiter vom Primis der Teuf. Das ist die good, Goodness, so to speak, that comes out of learning and working on the ideas of Pneumia the Torah, the, the innermost part of the Torah. So basically in this chapter he said, look, there are basically two ideas, two virtues, advantages of Pneumia the Torah. The first one is that you get connected to God, not to his wisdom, so to speak, even though his wisdom and him is one thing, the Zayar says, okay, very nice, but you get connected to him, to his most innermost part. And the second thing is, you disconnect from yourself, but in a good sense, not that you're like Otis, or, or, no, 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 you're connected to yourself, you're a normal person, but you disconnect from feeling yourself, and just thinking about yourself, and just considering that every should, everybody, should, everybody should thank you, because you are there, and because you exist, and you do things, everybody should be so thankful to you, no, no, wait a second, no. Whatever you do, it's because God wants me to do this. No, nothing more than that. Those are the two advantages, so to speak, of learning uh, Pneumius the Torah, the innermost part of the Torah. 